Well, hello and welcome to the Profit Express. I'm Tim Healy, and I'm inviting you to join me each and every Wednesday so you could be prepared to win the battle for business. That's right. Now, listen, I know you're out there. You're hustling. You're closing deals. You're making money. You're turning prospects into profits. So I got to make it worth your while. That's why I have on the kinds of guests that you can listen, learn, and earn from. Today's guest, no exception. It happens to be yours truly. You're in for a treat. So, Thanks for being on board the show, of course, and as always, a big special thanks to our sponsor, Corbett Public Relations, where they've been promoting and protecting businesses and brands for over 30 years. So do yourself a favor. Visit Bill and his team at CorbettPR.com. That's C-O-R-B-E-T-T-P-R.com. All right. Welcome aboard, everybody. Now, today, I want to share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly of some recent customer service experiences that I've had. And the reason I want to share them is because it's very unique. If you're a business owner, if you're a sales professional, we're on the other side of the table a lot as customers. And the reason I want to share some of my recent experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly, is because it really dawned on me recently just how valuable a learning lesson it can be for any business owner, for any manager, for any sales pro. So I'm going to share these lessons. These are lessons that I've been applying, got me thinking about my business, got me thinking about the the customer experience for my own customers. So I'm going to share them with you as a way to help you, of course, win that battle for business. So these are some pretty interesting uh, stories. Now, the first one is a rather personal one. It starts off with, uh, my parents recently celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. So, my brother and I want to take them to a really nice restaurant to help celebrate this very, very special occasion. So, there's this one restaurant in particular that my brother's gone to, I've gone to a number of times for business, for pleasure. My wife has gone to it for, for business and pleasure as well. We really like the restaurant. Great food, great atmosphere, right? So, we thought, okay. We definitely want to take him to this restaurant. Now, as much as I want to, I'm not going to name the restaurant. I don't want to do it. It's a local business here. I'm not going to do it. So I call up to make the reservation. The hostess picks up the phone and I said, hey, how you doing? Uh, I need to make a reservation. we got a very important, very special event. It's my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. And she's like, oh, that's great. I said, yeah, we got nine people, and we want to have it for the Saturday. And she's like, oh, okay, hold on a minute. She puts me on hold, so I think she's going through her reservation system. Then about a minute goes by, and she comes back, and she's like, oh, uh, I'm sorry, sir. We don't accommodate parties larger than eight. You, you, don't, you, don't, you can't do a, a party bigger than eight? Now, again, I said I've been in this restaurant a number of times. It's not a small establishment, right? And she's like, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I talked to the manager, and um, we, we, we can't do a, a party larger than eight. She said, but if you invite uh, one less person, if you only bring eight of the nine, then we can accommodate you. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. I'm like, so then I say, because my sarcasm takes over, and I say, okay, so, uh, so who should I not invite, my mom or my dad for their 60th wedding anniversary? And I start to laugh because I was obviously kidding. Well, she wasn't, and she hung up. I'm like, wait, what just happened? So now, here's the lesson in all this, and this is what got me thinking. Every business needs processes and procedures, right? Now, I'm in the sales sales process and procedure business. I create sales processes and procedures for my clients. And you can't be a business unless you have well-defined processes and procedures. And I understand that, and I respect it. Like I said, I'm in that business. And... I'm imagining this restaurant, because I don't work in the restaurant industry. I don't have clients in the restaurant industry. So I'm trying to be open-minded here. And I imagine they have a reason why they don't want to do uh, a parties greater than eight. But here's the thing. I don't think it was part of their process to hang up on me. And what should have happened, because I mean, I'm assuming, I'll make the assumption that this host has told the manager, yeah, I have this customer on the phone. They have a uh, parent's wedding anniversary, 60th wedding anniversary, but they have nine. Instead of him just telling me no, if his process was that important, right? And let's say, for example, let's think about this objectively. If you have a process and if you 
change that process or alter that process, and then it has a negative impact on the service you offer, then you have a great case maybe for not you know, making an exception. And I can respect that. So if the manager had got on and said, listen, sir, I'm very sorry. It sounds like it's a great, you know, happy occasion for you and your family. But, you know, with our resources, with our staff, you know, when we do parties over rates, it's really hard to manage. And we want to make sure you have a great experience. So that's why we have that rule in place. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry we, we can't help you out. But you know what? I, I, I Let me make it up to you. The next time you and your wife come in, 25% off. You know, I, I want to make it right to you, but I, again, I don't want to have a crowd we can't accommodate and then you guys aren't happy. Now, if that were the conversation, if he explained his process to me, and I said, okay, I might have been disappointed. And he said, hey, you know what? Let, let me offer you something next time you and your wife come in for dinner. Wow, okay, you know what? Now I would have been okay with it. Again, disappointed, right? But not frustrated, not mad. Now I'm at the restaurant, I, A, I hung up on. Right. And I, I, hate, I loathe getting hung up on. There's never a reason to get hung up on. Right. So will I go back there? Not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. So why am I sharing this? Because we all have processes and procedures in our businesses and you do have to follow them because if you don't, things can go haywire. But what I, I, I want you to think, I want you to consider. Right. I want you to think. Can I make an exception? Should I make an exception? And if I make an exception to our procedures, our rules, would it negatively impact the quality of service? And if it doesn't, just ask yourself that question. If it doesn't, then you know what? Make somebody happy. Create a great memory. Bend the rules a little bit. Because it's all about, you know, how easy is it to do business with you? That's one question I've been asking myself a lot about recently, and it's some more of the experiences I'm going to share later on that talk about ease of doing business, right? So you, you don't want to be so rigid. You don't want to hide behind no. That's not a good place to be. It's not a creative place to be. It's not a place where you solve problems and make people happy. So unfortunately, we had to find a different restaurant. We didn't get to go to one of my favorites uh, for my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. So examine your processes, you know, can you bend the rules? Be open-minded. All right, so that's one. The next one, next story I got here, and th this is, this is a, a bit of an ongoing situation I've got going. So I've been going to the same Volvo dealer since 2010. All right, so that's, that's 13 years, okay? And I will say this. I am a super loyal customer. I bring my car to this dealership for everything. And I don't lease cars. I drive them. I get miles on my car. I do a lot of driving. So I get a lot of service work done. All right. Even for oil change, windshield wipers, the big stuff, the small stuff. And there's a lot of other service stations between where I live and this dealership, which is 30 minutes away. But I always go last 13 years to this dealership. Okay. So this dealership recently got bought by one of those big auto groups. It was probably about a year ago. And ever since this auto group, which owns a bunch of dealerships, uh, bought this dealership, the one I've been going to for 13 years, I started to see the service slip. I never liked those big, big groups, right? I always get nervous. It's very hard for those big groups to have really great service, in my experience. So this is what happened, and this is why I'm sharing it on the show today. So the last, it was, it's been two months. In the last two months, I bought the car in, and I've had to bring it back three times. And I've got brakes done. I've gotten tires done. I spent a couple thousand dollars, right? You know, it's not cheap. And in that period of two months, I've had to come back three times for things that either forgot to do or things that didn't get fixed properly. And the most recent time I came back to the dealership was this, uh, this past Wednesday. Okay. So I'm really starting to get frustrated. So on my second visit, okay, not this previous one Wednesday, previous, uh, previous to that, okay. Um, checking out, I'm going up to the cashier, I'm paying my bill, and the service writer's kind of standing to my right. And he hands me the keys, and I thought he'd go back to service while I paid, you know, the, the front desk. And he's standing there, and I'm like, 
Okay, I just thought he was being nice, a little chit chat. So I pay my bill and I said, okay, so where's my car? I was just asking where my car is. He's like, well, I- I'm not sure. He's like, here, let- let's-, let's take a walk. We'll find it together. And I said, <laughs> I said, isn't that a colossal waste of time? Why don't you just tell me where it is? Well, uh, I don't know where it is. Well, we'll find it together. So now maybe it's the New Yorker and me. I'm starting to get a little suspicious. I feel like I'm being set up. All right, whatever. So we go out. We go out to the front of the dealership. We go around to the, to the back of the dealership, and we find my car. And he's like, oh, here's your car, Mr. Healy. I said, okay, great. And he opens the door for me, and he's like, oh, what a lovely interior you have, Mr. Healy. I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> really? And as soon as he says, hey, what a lovely interior you have, Mr. Healy. Oh, and yeah, by the way, we're going to be sending you this survey, and if you wouldn't mind giving us a, fi- a favorable five-star rating and review, that would be great. And I sat there. I'm like, okay, whatever. And, man, at that very moment, first of all, felt like I got played because he didn't obviously care about walking me to my car. He didn't care about my interior. He was just reminding me. He was reminding me that, oh, yeah, we're going to send you this email survey. Please give us a five-star review. So now why am I sharing this story? I'm sharing this story because, again, now this is the second trip back in two months, right? This guy doesn't know that I'm not all that happy with the dealership currently, and he's just asking for a good review. So I'm starting to think, are you focused in on the service or the survey? So, of course, I didn't fill out the, and I, I, I didn't fill out the, the survey at all, negative or positive. I just I deleted it when I got it. So then I had to come back for the third time this past Wednesday, and then I'm like, you know what? Let me talk to the manager. So I tell the manager my story. He's like, oh, Mr. Healy, we're going to take care of it. You know, oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not making this up. So he gives me a free state inspection. It's 38 bucks. Like, I could care less about this. Because, by the way, me going back to this dealership, I got to drive there half hour. You wait two hours at least in the dealership. Then you got to drive back. So it's almost half my day. I got to bring my laptop. I got to do work in the dealership while I'm waiting because it's such a time drain, right? So it was, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of this, Mr. Healy. We'll make sure we take care of this. And there's one other issue I brought up this past Wednesday I wanted to take a look at. Nothing major, but I wanted to take a look at it. And... So he gives me this free state inspection like I could care less. And I get my car. I get in it, driving home, about halfway home. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if they checked that. There was an issue with the, something in the trunk. And I clearly, the, the service manager went out. I showed it to him. He looked at it himself personally. So now it might seem like a small thing. But now I got to call him back. And I said, hey, did you guys look at this? There's like a lever in the trunk. I got to follow up on them. And I already got the survey in the email. I think I got it yesterday. Saying, hey, uh, thanks for coming in to the Volvo dealership. Blah, 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 blah. Can you? So, and this is why I'm really sharing this with you today. Because I don't know what industry you're in, where you sell, what you sell, product or service, but there's usually good stiff competition, Right? And I just feel that I'm not getting a great level of service in a lot of different ways recently. So to me, and listen, I know surveys can be very, very valuable. I really don't use them myself. But again, they could be a great marketing tool. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, listen, and I'm okay. We've all asked for testimonials from our clients. I have. I have no problem with that. And you have to remind them because sometimes, you know, I do understand reminding them, right? But maybe if the service wasn't so bad, is poor the past few months, I would have been more apt to responding. And the fact that he kind of set me up and it was a, just a cheesy delivery, it's like amateur night in the arena, Ugh, I didn't like it. But again, focus more on the service that you're offering, not so much the survey. Because now I'm going to brag about, you know, Tim Healy, Healy Success Solutions. One thing I know is this, my clients stay, they last. I've enjoyed a ton of great relationships for many, many years. They keep coming back because I offer great service. And not just that, I get a very good steady stream of referrals. I know they're happy. And yes, I do ask for the testimonials from time to time. Focus on the service, not the survey. Make your service so awesome, so amazing, that they can't wait to tell people about it. So, so far, we're 0 for 2 on, st- on, on my own 
customer experience stories. But again, as the business owner, as a sales professional, we are also consumers. We're also customers. And when we're having these kinds of experiences, be open-minded and say, hey, what can I learn from this? And be objective and honest with yourself and saying, hey, is, 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 this, is the service that I offer my customers, is it up to par? Will I stand out? Will they want to you know, rave about me and brag about me? That's, that's what I'm sharing here today. To take these lessons that we learned, these real-life lessons from other customers, from other vendors that you're doing business with, and, hey, what can I learn? How can I improve my service? How can I become awesome? All right, so those are the first two stories. Now, this, the, so that was the – I kind of started with the bad and the ugly, and now I'm going to get to the good. This third story is, is a favorite of mine. And it actually goes back to 2016, so what, that's it's almost six years now. And I will mention this uh, hotel by name because it ended up being a great story. So I don't know if you've ever heard of it or if you've ever been there. If you're ever in Laguna Beach in California, there's a hotel called The Montage. It is an absolutely gorgeous facility. I've been there twice on business. Each time I was there, I was there for almost a week. So I really had extensive stays there, right, uh, for sales conferences with, with clients, right? So you go in. It's a beautiful courtyard. The lobby is gorgeous. I mean, you first walk in, just picture this. They have floor to ceiling, these gigantic windows overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Man, it is gorgeous. Facilities, beautiful. Rooms, beautiful. Staff, amazing. And I was there when I was there. Since I was there for a number of days, I had to get laundry service done. And this is the kind of place, just to give you a little idea, that when you get laundry service and you're, you're gone for the day, you go to the, the seminars and the conferences, and you come back, my, my, my laundry was done, and they put it in a wicker basket. And it was my underwear, to be honest, and they wrapped it in this tissue paper, and they had a ribbon around it, and they had a, a, a fresh flower in it. I mean, it was, it was awesome. It was amazing. I almost didn't want to open up to get my underwear. So that's the kind of place this is. Just beautiful. Like I said, I've been there twice, so I really experienced it. I loved going there. So the last time I was there, I was leaving on a Friday. And again, this is in California. I have to go back to New York. And I got a red-eye flight because I want to be back for the weekend. And I'll never forget, so it was 10 to 5. And I want to get a nice dinner at the restaurant. I didn't want to eat the, the airplane food. I want to have a nice, good dinner for the long red-eye flight home. So I get into the restaurant. It's 10 to 5. And the restaurant's empty. And a waiter comes over to me. And he says, oh, I'm sorry. We don't start dinner service till 5. I said, okay, you know, just sit me down. I'll start looking at the menu. You know, maybe grab me a drink so when I'm, you know, by the time I look at what I want, it'll be 5 o'clock. Perfect. My, my timing will be perfect. I mean, it's, it seemed pretty basic to me, right? And he said, no, I'm sorry, sir. You know, it's, it's, you have to come back in 10 minutes. Then he walks away. Now, I had a car picking me up to take me to the airport. I think it was like 630. So I didn't have a lot. Of, I didn't have a big window. And I didn't have a car, so I couldn't just drive to another restaurant and, and a whole big hassle like that. So I was pissed. So I go to the front desk and say, I want to speak to your manager. And what I loved about this, sometimes when you ask businesses, I want to speak to the manager. Oh, sir, what is this in reference to? And, blah, 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 and they, they try to deflect and answer, you know, they don't, they don't put you in touch with the manager, which we could debate that too. They got the manager right away. And I told her what had happened. And I said, listen, I got a red-eye flight. I've been here all week. I want to have a nice dinner before I go. I got a car picking me up about an hour, hour and a half. And I told her what happened. And I've had businesses apologize for bad experiences. I've had businesses, you know, offer, oh, you know, uh, we're, we're, here's, a, here's a gift card, here's a coupon, whatever. And they've done the right thing. But what this manager at the Montage in Laguna Beach did was, it just, it never left me, the experience. And like I said, every other experience I had at that hotel was fantastic. But listen, it's going to happen. You have a, a, a big business, a big hotel, you got lots of employees. Some employee's going to have a brain fart and do something stupid, it's going to happen. 
she apologizes profusely. I mean, and I just got a real genuine sense that she felt horrible. And she's like, sir, we're going to take you to the restaurant now. The chef will make you anything you want. If it's not on the menu, don't worry. He'll make it for you. I said, that's not necessary. I just wanted to flay, no, nothing too crazy. He's like, she's like, if there's anything else I can get for you, anything that the resort has to offer, it's available to you right now. And then she just went on and went on. And she's like, I will make sure that that waiter is not in the restaurant when you're there. And she's like, is there anything in particular you want the chef to make for you? I said, no, don't worry about it. She's like, what about a special dessert? I said, no, I'm good. She sits me down. I order. Meal comes out. It's delicious. Towards the end of my dinner, the chef himself comes out and says, uh, sorry, I've heard about your experience. I know you didn't want anything in particular, but I, I <laughs> baked these fresh chocolate chip cookies. And he brings them out in this beautiful little plate with a little napkin of linen, right? And they're still, like, soft and gooey and steamy. Like, these freaking things just came out of the oven. I'm like, wow. Wow. The meal was great. I ate it. I would absolutely go back there. I would recommend it to anybody. It's a tremendous experience. So that's an example of, hey, you know what? You screwed up. It's going to happen. Like I said, you got that many employees. Some employees going to have a bad day. Something's going to happen. They're not going to think. But then, then again, it kind of goes back full circle what I'm talking about today. You know, we have our own processes and procedures, but they have to be flexible. We can't hide behind no's. We have to examine our own customer experiences. How easy is it to do business with us? Because if it's not easy to do business, if you have to jump through too many hoops, then you know what? Maybe somebody else is going to make it easier than you, and you could be out, and that's not good. So those were three experiences. The restaurant with my parents, 60th anniversary, Volvo, and then the montage in Laguna Beach in California. And it got me thinking. It got me thinking about my own processes and procedures. How can I make them better? How can I streamline them? Because, again, if you've had your own processes for a while, you know what? It could be time to look at them and examine them objectively. Things change. Technology changes. Can we make it better? Okay? And that whole thing with, you know, the survey, I don't know, man. You just focus on offering service that is so awesome people can't help but rave about you. Instead of just kind of, oh, would you mind filling out five stars? <laughs> you know, especially when I've just come off a bad experience. So these are my experiences and I want to share them with you. These are lessons that you can apply to help you win the battle for business. And here's one more thing I'm going to leave you with today here on A Profit Express is this. That when you are, again, on the other side of the table and you are the customer and, you're, and you had an awesome experience, reflect, hey, you know what? What can I learn from these people? This is awesome. How can I, how can I incorporate that into my business? Or if it was horrible, you know what? I just want to make sure I'm not doing any of this with my customers. So that's it for today on the Profit Express. Just sharing some of my own personal customer service experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly. Hey, thanks so much for spending some of your time with me today. As always, you can always follow the show and me on Instagram at the Profit Express, at the Profit Express page on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Follow, like, click, yada, 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 and be on the lookout every Wednesday when episodes like today will air. And until next time, Let's continue to win the battle for business.